I actually grew up, and I don't mean in terms of the amount of time, but in terms of the things that really shaped my life. Uh, I grew up in the Desolation Valley. I was there every summer from the time I was 10 until the time that I turned 18. And uh, so it is for me the passion about this place above all else. It, uh, it challenged me. Uh, spent a lot of time in some pretty rugged terrain and without much of uh, food or heat or any of those great things. But you know, when I had the opportunity to come back and live here as an adult, I came back first working for Harris, and I was absolutely sure that I wanted to be here and I wanted to be part of the life here at the lake. And uh, so it just, it's, it's wonderful to be back. Uh, my wife and I just spent three years in Chicago which is a wonderful place, but nothing, nothing on the face of the earth compares to living here. So uh, a little bit about, um, about my past and a couple of themes that I heard both Charles and David talking about in particular. My first job uh, as a CFO was with a traffic and transportation engineering company. And one of the first things that I learned was the point that Charles made, and that is the largest source of really vile pollution that exists on this planet comes from automobiles and other motorized vehicles. And uh, so I was the CFO at the college during the time that the science building was constructed and we had the great fortune to strike a partnership with our good friends at Davis. And uh, when I had the chance to come back, the first thing that I thought about was how do we now capitalize on the existence of that building and that partnership and how do we as an institution really start to lead behavioral change on the part of the people in the basin even though I may have to run to catch up with David at this point but I think there are two things that came up here that to me are centric one is automobile traffic and one of the things I learned while I was working in the transportation industry is that the biggest source of automobile pollution comes from idle vehicles and the slower they go the more damaging they are one of the biggest problems we have in a place like this is that we all make short trips on frequent bases and in those short trips we stop a lot so over the course of a given mile we are actually probably some of the largest polluters on the face of the earth because of those cars so uh, I was telling some people earlier when I came back I inherited a company car and it was absolutely one of the finest cars that I've ever been inside of I love the car it's, it's just a great thing. It is a 5.7 liter Hemi Laredo version of a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Drove it to work a couple of days and uh, was sitting around thinking about the sustainability mission of the institution and what we ought to do to change things. And uh, my good friend, uh, is he here right now? Dr. G, you're there? Yep. Paul came by the office and was just asking in general if I had an interest in electric vehicles and per perhaps doing something to position the opportunity to acquire them in front of some of the students. And it dawned on me that that was a great opportunity to become a thought leader. And so uh, since I was given, thank you very much, the free use on a temporary basis of an electric moped, I have not once, well, I guess I have to confess one time, I drove that Jeep, it has otherwise been stationary, um, I ride that electric vehicle every day back and forth to work. Uh, the only time that I use a gas-powered vehicle now is to go over the mountain down to Reno if I have to do something and I use my own personal vehicle which uses less fuel. And I say that not, not to say it's a grand thing, but as we think about the challenges and we listen to what David is doing in his enterprise, it is often the smallest things that have the greatest impact. And I think it's incumbent upon SNC, if it is going to show its value in this basin, to become a center for collecting the thoughts of individuals and enterprises that are focused on those topics. We had the great fortune of coming into this partnership with our great friends at the University of California. We have to now live up to their being willing to house themselves on our campus by becoming a center for a broader set of initiatives. And that leads me to uh, just mentioning quickly some of our partners. Obviously UC Davis, first and foremost, were it not for UC Davis and their willingness to strike this deal with us across state lines between, between a very large state institution and a very small private institution, 
and to bank on the fact that we would be around for the long haul, I don't think SNC would have a clear purpose today. We have, as an institution, have now come to four key principles that are our driving core. And they are, number one, not surprisingly, preparedness. And that means both of the student to graduate, uh, but as well to, to be prepared for life, career, and all the things that are necessary for them to be successful rounded individuals. The second is we're going to continue to have a very strong focus on the liberal arts. And that's because if people are trained only to be technicians and skilled experts in one area, they run the risk of not truly being whole human beings. And so that will always be a theme, at least in what we do at the, the lower division level. Third is entrepreneurial thought, and that's meant in a very positive and constructive way, not only with what you do in your working life, but in all of your life. And then finally, and very important, sustainability. And when we talk about sustainability, we mean of the enterprise itself, of the behavior of the individuals that we come in contact with, and hopefully, ultimately, of the entire community. And uh, so we have UC Davis, first foremost, number one in that area. Number two, I'm happy to say that we are in the final stages of cutting a deal with the Nevada Institute for Renewable Energy Commercialization, NIREC. They will be uh, having a home on our campus and will be collaborating with us. And then hopefully, in the not too distant future, we will have a long-term relationship with, uh, I'll not mention the name, but I, you may be able to conclude who it is, the number one engineering company in the world focused in particular on sustainability issues, energy control systems, and, and many of the areas that uh, David was alluding to earlier. Their, their purpose will be to make a naming contribution for our science building, and then to actually house a team of people on our campus who will be specifically tasked with working with this community, and I, I define that broadly to mean not only the Lake Tahoe Basin, but all of the state of Nevada and later hopefully California, in driving to where we can actually tout Nevada as a green state and perhaps California as well in the future. Um, so we're very proud of that, but we, we, I think we feel a very strong sense of responsibility to see to it that we fulfill the educational component of what needs to happen. And that doesn't mean necessarily that we are the one doing the teaching, but that we become a center for activity. Part of the, uh, the intended program with this new partner will not only be to have activity in the state, but also to convert our campus to a sustainable campus with an eye towards it becoming the first lead ranked, uh, I guess a commercial property for lack of a better term in the entire world so that the entire campus would have a lead ranking, not just individual buildings. And hopefully that we could even get it to the level where the entire campus is actually at the platinum, platinum level as the science building is today. And uh, that takes me to the second of the two steps. The first was the vehicle traffic because of car pollution. Uh, the second is the, uh, the, as we all know, very big issue that our good friends at the TRPA constantly wrestle with with respect to coverage and the impact of the runoff of the silt and other and dirt that go with the runoff from rain and snow. And uh, a second component of what we're going to be entertaining is actually building a catch basin on the campus so that we are assured that every drop of water that it will run off the campus is first filtered in some fashion. My idea was somewhat simplistic. It probably involved a lot of heavy equipment. Uh, Charles actually told me that there may be a way to accomplish that by having a, uh, a small virtual wetlands that would perform that activity. But uh, that we actually make the campus functionally and physically a contributor as well. Um, you may all know that I've only been back in this position for a couple of months. I'm extraordinarily excited to be back. I will always have the pristine condition of the desolation wilderness in the back of my mind as we push to do things. And I hope that we can keep, become a place that everyone here and throughout the entire basin would see as a center for people to come together and talk about the topics that are so critical to all of us.